muscles of the neck. And you can see that big green one attaches from behind the back of your ear all the way to your collarbone. And then you can see in the back, that area that I'm often talking about, that occipital ridge area, that goes all the way to the upper back top of your shoulder area. And then there's like layers underneath, um, also connects into the jaw. So you can see all those different muscles there. So we're gonna work on kind of lengthening in particular the area of the neck. So um, I'm gonna show you a setup for a little massage for the back of the occipital ridge with some blocks. So I'm gonna get that ready. I'm gonna go ahead and mute. You guys can hear me okay? Yes. Yes, all right. Okay, you guys are uh -huh. muted. So I'm gonna show you this setup. So you're gonna take two blocks. One's gonna go flat. And then the other one's gonna go in front of it on the angle. Okay, so one flat, and then the other one is kind of tipped over, and you're gonna have this top little ridge of the second block is gonna go right along that occipital ridge to help release some of those muscles in there. So, um, hold on a second, I just lost my notes, they disappeared. Let me get that back up and then, I'll well, let me show you that. You guys can do that while I'm getting my notes back up. So you'll be sitting like this and you're gonna try and aim for that corner of the block to be right at the hairline, occipital ridge, and then you're just gonna kind of massage side to side, okay? So you can go ahead and get that started. And we'll take a little bit of time there to do that. And you might like kind of notice, are there little tender areas? You could even pause on one side or the other um, where you might feel that tenderness. Go slow and stay with your breathing. All right. And then, when you feel like you've had enough of it, you can stay with it a little longer if you want. I'm gonna tell you a little yoga story. When you feel like you've had enough of it, just come down on your back off the blocks and you could put, you know, maybe like a little blanket underneath your head. And then you can stay with your feet flat, work on some breathing, okay? So we were introduced to the character in the yoga mythology of Shiva, maybe a month or two ago when we were talking about um, the cycle of destruction and birth and rebirth. So I have a little bit more about Shiva today because this I thought really goes with the current events that are going on right now. So there is a story in the yoga tradition, yoga philosophies, of a great battle, of course, between the gods and the demons. And it is said that there, in this great battle, there was a churning of the ocean of consciousness. So it kind of represents our own psyche. And in this churning of the ocean of consciousness, there was created poison and nectar. So the poison were all these things like greed and hatred and war and, um, you know, all the things that we think of as are more destructive to our society and our consciousness. And then the nectar is all the kind of good stuff, the soothing, the calm, the peace. And in this great battle, both of these things were created. And the poison kind of got out of control and threatened to basically destroy the world. So Shiva comes along and he swallows up this poison and he holds it in his throat. He doesn't swallow it and he doesn't spit it out. And so my interpretation of this and a lot of these stories are very multi-layered and there's a lot more to it. I'm kind of really paring it down so we not take a whole hour to tell the story. Um, but to me it kind of represents our own consciousness, our own minds and how that we've got all this 
negativity, but then there's also the good stuff and how we can hold space. So Sheena doesn't swallow the poison, doesn't digest it, doesn't spit it out, but he holds it in his throat to save the world. And so it's symbolic to me of how we need to hold space for all that kind of poison of our own minds and of the world. We can't get rid of it, right? We can't swallow it or it might kill us. We can't spit it back out or it might hurt somebody else. But we can hold space for it. And hopefully through this focus more on the peace and the harmony, transform it. So we'll take a few more cycles of breath there. It sort of ties in with this old story that I'll share one more thing with you guys. It's a Cherokee story. An old Cherokee man told his grandson, my son, there is a battle between two wolves inside us all. One is evil. It is anger, jealousy, greed, resentment, inferiority, lies, and ego. And the other is good. It is joy, peace, love, hope, humility, kindness, empathy, and truth. The boy thought about it and asked grandfather, which wolf wins? And the old man quietly replied, the one you feed. You guys probably heard that one before, but I thought it really tied in well. So now we're just going to do our gentle turning of the head, turn the head to the right shoulder and just give a gentle press. And just observe that stretching of the muscles in the neck and then go to the other side. And as your head turns to one side, press your opposite shoulder blade into the floor and go gently side to side a few more times. So a lot of us have compression here in the area of the neck and the throat. So going with our Shiva story, we're gonna focus on this area today. Do maybe two more times per side. And observing if you've got any tension, any pain, any tenderness in this area. So we have that compression. A lot of times that has a lot to do with our um, pelvic tilt. So if our pelvic tilt is off, our neck is often gonna be off as well. So we can look at that when we're standing. So finish out that last round and then take a full body stretch. Arms reach overhead, legs reach out, and do a little up slip, down slip, side to side, reach through right arm, right leg, left arm, left leg. When we do our up slip, down slips, we're really um, lengthening psoas, side body. When our body is collapsed, we tend to have a little bit of forward head positioning and more tightening of those back neck muscles. So lengthening psoas is really important for um, our neck. And then after you do one more cycle on each side, go ahead and bring your knees in, hug your knees into your chest, and you can do a little side to side movement, a little side to side rock. And then we're gonna go ahead, go to the side and come on up into our seated position. All right, so go ahead, feel free to sit up on something if that's helpful to you. And we're gonna bring our hands into the back of the neck area and starting feeling that occipital ridge area. And then we're gonna drop down about an inch or so about midway between your occipital ridge and the tops of your shoulders. And we're gonna massage that area out a little bit. Just kind of massage in there. And one time when our head's forward, there's a kink there, or else we're looking down and then the mu muscles get overstretched. So let's release any tension there. And what we're also doing is working on a point called bladder 10, the whole back chain of our fascia relates to our bladder meridian. And this one here is called the heavenly pillar because it helps hold our head up on our heads. It is said that when we are unable to hold ourselves up, we feel unsupported to move forward in life, or we feel our legs are too weak to support our bodies, this point is called for. If movement through life is impeded by chronic fear, 
this area gets affected. Anxiety affects this area of the body as well. So it helps our, our person access our true will that arises from our kidney energy. It can help clear the brain and bring a fresh view, openness to the future, help us hold our head up high and look forward with confidence. All right, go ahead and pause. And now keep your hands on those points and drop your head forward. So now they're a little softer perhaps than they were before. And then we're gonna slowly take our head back. And do that one more time, draw forward. Now when you draw forward, those muscles are lengthening, overstretching. And then draw back, and when we draw back, then they're shortening and tightening. Good, and then come back to the center, release your hands down. And just keep an awareness to that length in the back of the neck. All right, we're gonna take a couple moments to do some ujjayi breath. Might have been a while since we've done it, but it's when we constrict the throat as we breathe in and breathe out. So this helps stim stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system. So if you haven't done it before, it feels like you're going, <sighs> like you're fogging a mirror and you feel that little vibratory quality in your throat. So close your eyes if you're comfortable and go ahead and start a nice soft breath and see if you can create that vibration in the back of your throat kind of sounds like a cat's purr, or is sometimes called ocean sounding breath. And see if you can access that little vibration both on the inhale and the exhale. Also said to help strengthen the area of the throat. And let's do that for a few more cycles. And if you think about it, I'll try to remind you, you can use ujjayi breath throughout your practice. And it really helps us um, draw the breath out a bit, slows the breath down, and that little vibratory quality, the vagus nerves going through our ear, through our neck, down into our organs. So it helps send that signal to our body that in this moment we are safe, there is no threat. So that's the shift that we can do away from the poison to the nectar. So let's take three more breath cycles just like that. Right after that third breath, we're gonna go ahead and grab our strap. Feel free to switch your legs out, straighten them out if you need to. Switch the crossing if you feel like that's helpful. And we're gonna take the strap, fold it in half if you have a really long strap, and make sure it's nice and even. And we're gonna take it behind the back of our heads. And we're gonna put it right at that occipital ridge. So put it at that ridge area where your hairline meets your neck. And we're gonna pull upward a bit so you feel like you're tractioning. And at the same time, root your sit bones down, root the crown of the head up, and try to feel like you're lifting your skull right off of your shoulders. The chin is gonna tuck down just a tiny bit. That's called the Jalandhara Bandha when we lower our chin, but not drop the chin. So there's a big difference between just dropping the chin, like when we look at our devices, and lowering the chin just enough to lengthen the back of the skull. Now we're gonna turn the head, so we're going to a little bit of a twist, and keep lifting the back of your skull as you take that turn. Now as you turn, I'm turning to the right. I'm gonna pull a little bit more with my left hand. And then inhale it back to the center. Keep that nice tall spine. And then exhale, go the other way. And as you twist to the left, pull a little bit more with your right hand. 
Good, let's do it one more time on each side if you can. Inhale the center, keep that traction, and twist. Remember, you're pulling a little bit more with that opposite hand, back to center, inhale, exhale, twist one more time the other way. And then pull a little bit with that opposite hand. Good, inhale back to the center. Good, and then hold there, pull, lift, traction. And then let's let it go. So we're gonna use the strap again in some of the other poses. So some of our basic poses, we're gonna bring in that strap to get that lift in the spot. For now, let's come into tabletop position, all fours. And I'll give you a couple little instructions here when we get into table. So don't start your cat cows yet. Press through your palms and see if you can notice that your head doesn't drop below your spine. So a lot of times we come into this position and our head drops a little bit lower. So keep the back of the neck long. Imagine the strap is there tractioning the back of your skull. And you could even bring your chin slightly in until you feel that lengthening. It's like a clearing of the channel of the back of the skull. And then from here, let your heart soften down toward the ground just a bit. So we're still just in a neutral tabletop, but we're finding really good form here. As we begin our cat cows, let's see if we can keep the back of the neck nice and long. So as you inhale, we arch the spine. Try not to tip your head back. Let the movement happen more in your spine. And then exhale, go ahead and round. And your head's gonna now drop, but try not to like tuck it in toward your chest too much. And then let's continue, inhale, arch. Really important more on that inhale phase. We tend to really keep our neck here. So can you find that length? Exhale round as you're ready. And keep going, really paying attention on the inhale. Can we get more of the movement into the spine as opposed to the, or well, the whole thing is the spine, but mid spine as opposed to your neck kinking. Last cycle. Good, and then let's come back to neutral. Let's take a brief child's pose, get off those arms for a moment. And then back to your tabletop position. Let's set that up again so that your head is not dropping below the rest of your spine. Chin tucks in a little bit, heart softens down a bit while the arms are really straight and strong. Now, imagine that your whole spine is like a, a straight line and we're gonna bend the line, but we're not gonna drop the head below the line. So take an inhale, exhale, we're gonna look over the right shoulder. So head looks toward the right hip. We're coming into a side bend. And then back to center and then over to the other side. You're going to look toward the opposite shoulder or hip without dropping your head. Go side to side a few more times. So it's like a salamander just kind of moving side to side here. One more time each side. Good. All right, come back to center, grab a block. So make sure your knees are padded here. We're on the knees for a bit today if you're having any problems there. Put the block in front of you. And we're gonna put the palms down, face up, and come into kind of this puppy pose that we do sometimes. Your pinky fingers are pressing into the sides of the block and you're turning your palms open so that your thumbs start to draw toward the floor. And then we're gonna kind of go forward and back a bit. So we're gonna inhale a little forward and exhale, start to move your hips back. And do that a few times. So it works on kind of this upper spine area. Toes can be tucked or untucked. Especially as we age, we tend to get rounding and stiffness in the mid to upper back. And then we have less of a support system for our neck. 
Okay, now the next time we move to the back position, hips go back towards your heels. See if you might be able to lift your block up with your hands and place it behind the back of your skull. Let your head come toward the floor. So if you need to, you can look up for a moment. Block comes behind your head and then drag your arms, your shoulders towards your feet, getting a little stretch into your triceps and press into the block. One more breath there. Good, and then release, lock down. And let's get off the knees for a moment, come up into a downward facing dog. We're gonna come back onto our knees for a moment after that. So lift those hips up, and you might go ahead and pedal your feet out. Shake your head out a bit, loosen up that neck area. Even in our dog, we could get that slight chin tuck so we feel the back of the skull lengthening. And then knees back down to the ground. We're going to come in to thread the needle posture from here. I'm going to give you some different instructions today. So we'll take the right arm, reach it up, and thread it through. Actually, you know what, guys? Why don't you watch me for a second? This is just slightly different than what we normally do. So come on out, just in case it's hard to understand what I'm saying. It's not that crazy, but I just want you to get a visual. Okay. So my right hand's up. I'm going to go through. Now, normally, we keep this hand where it is. But I'm going to have you turn. Sorry, this might be in the way. I'm going to have you turn that free hand, fingers towards your head, and put those fingers down. And you're going to push into those fingers, push into the bottom arm, and see if you could turn your head up toward the ceiling and keep your hips from swaying, keep the hips in the center. So it's a little bit of pushing through that hand and turning your head up. So be mindful of your own neck. If it's a challenging area for you, just take care of yourself. Don't go too far, okay? So right hand threads through, turn your left fingertips towards your head, elbows up, and then push down in your finger pads, push down in your bottom arm, and start to turn your head any amount toward the ceiling to get that stretch in the neck. Hold there for one more breath. Good. And when you're ready, very slowly release it, come back to the center, and we will try the other side. You can always put a blanket on your head too, if you have any um, feeling like it's too hard on the ground here. Left arm reaches up high, inhale, exhale, thread it through. And then right fingertips turn towards your head, that elbow goes out, and then we press into the finger pads, Press into the bottom arm and start to turn your head up toward the ceiling. And then we get that extra stretch in some of those neck muscles that we saw in the diagram. One more breath here. And then very slowly release. Bring yourself back to the center and come back to child's pose once again. And we're just going to take one more breath cycle there. And then we're going to slide onto our bellies. We're going to stack the palms up on top of each other and put your elbows out wide and then rest your forehead on your palms. Pull your tailbone down into the ground to help lengthen your lower back. And then we're going to pick both elbows up off the ground, but not anything else, just the elbows. And as you lift the elbows, see if you can feel that strengthening of the area of the upper back, the neck muscles, and then release. And let's do that two more rounds. Elbows lift and squeeze up. And release. Last round.
All right, now we're gonna lift those elbows up again, press your head and your hands into each other. And you, when you do that, you might feel those neck muscles engage. I want you to feel it today, a little bit of engagement. And now try to lift everything up. So head, arms, lift off the ground, elbows are lifting, and you're pressing your head and hands into each other, tailbone down toward the ground. And then let it go. And you're gonna do two more rounds like that. So lifting up as you're ready, we're focusing on trying to strengthen the area of the upper back, which will help support our cervical spine. And then when you're ready, release and do one more round. And after that last round, just go ahead and rest it down for a moment. Okay, we're going to slide our hands back and press into tabletop position. And let's take it into downward facing dog as a transition to come up to stand. So we'll walk the hands back toward the feet and fold forward over your legs. Inhale, let's rise all the way up. Take your time, exhale, hands to your heart. Okay, we're gonna go through a couple rounds of sun salves. A couple common mistakes we make when we do our halfway lift, we often lift our chin and see how my neck is all kinked. So when we do halfway lift, try to keep your, just like a tabletop, we kept our head in line with our spine, not dropping and not sticking that chin out. Okay, so let's do three rounds and just have nice mindful awareness of your neck as we do our sun cells. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, fold forward, slight bend in the knees. Inhale to your halfway lift. Now keep that spine as one long piece. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, hands to your heart. Good, inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway pause. Keep the head in line. And this time, lift your shoulder pads to strengthen those upper back muscles. And then exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up. On this last round, we're going to hold that halfway lift for a few breaths, hands to heart, one more time. Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale to then halfway lift, hands on thighs. Pause, chin tucks a little bit. Kind of stick your sit bones back behind you. Press the crown of the head forward. Lift your shoulder heads. And now breathing here for another moment or two. Can you kind of press the back of the skull upward a little bit? Last breath. Good back strengthener. And then fold forward. Inhale, we rise up. And exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Okay. Step your feet apart a little bit so that you have a little extra distance there. We're gonna take right arm, reach it up, and then tuck it behind your head. So we'll do the Gomukhasana arm. We'll reach up and hold that elbow. Okay, couple instructions here. Take your right palm, slide it a little bit more towards your outer shoulder, and kind of rotate the arm inward towards your head a bit more. So it's an inner spiral. And now press your head and your arm into each other. Keep the elbow reaching up, head and arm pressing into each other, tailbone down, and then we side bend. And keep pressing the arm and head into each other. Now turn your head and look to the right. And keep that pressing action. And then inhale back up to center, head center. Two more on this side. Respiral the arm. So the palm slides towards outer shoulder. Elbow spirals kind of inward, reaching up. Press the head and the arm. And then side bend. And look up toward the ceiling. Toward the right side. But keep that pressing action 
and then release. We'll do it one more time on this side. Spiral that arm again, hand toward the outer shoulder, lift the elbow up, press, and side bend. Looking towards your right and up toward the ceiling. And then come up and release. While that pressing the head into the arm helps strengthen the side of the neck muscles right here. So a lot of us have muscles that are weak in our neck. So let's try the other side. Reach the arm up. Tuck it behind your head, we'll hold the elbow. Slide your hand toward outer shoulders and then that tricep kind of rotates in and lifts up. Press your head and arm into each other. Tailbone down and then we side bend over toward that right side. Look to your left and press your arm and head. And come up, get a nice side stretch as well. Two more times. So redo the arm each time, kind of get that spiral and the lift and the press and then side bend. Good, one more time, back to center, recalibrate. Last time. Good. Coming back to the center, let's release the arms and just roll it out a little bit. Okay, we're gonna take the hands and interlace them behind the back of the head, and we're gonna press the skull and the hands into each other and keep the elbows wide and keep a little bend in your knees. So as you press your head and your hands into each other and keep the elbows wide, we might feel that strengthening in the neck. Now we're gonna take an inhale, exhale, bend your knees a lot, and start to hinge forward. And you might come part way, you might come halfway, like our halfway lift, but keep the sensation of your head and hands pressing. Elbows nice and wide. And then press up, press in your feet, press your head and your hands into each other as you come up. Good, and then release your arms. Okay. We're gonna do it now in a forward fold. So if you don't wanna do a forward fold today because of your back, you're gonna repeat that in the more upright position. Those of you who are comfortable in the forward fold, we're gonna do it in the forward fold. So watch for a moment. I'm gonna hinge up my hips, come down, and then clasp, elbows wide, press my head and hands into each other. And then I'm gonna keep a good bend in my knees and press all the way up as I press my head and hands into each other, okay? So let's try. So let's inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, fold if you're gonna fold. If not, stay vertical. And then interlace your hands behind the back of your skull. Keep your elbows wide, deep bend in your knees. Press your head and hands into each other and slowly start to come up by pressing your head into your hand pressing your feet into the floor, and then come all the way up. And then when you're ready, release your arms and circle it out. Good. Okay, let's grab our strap again. And we're gonna come into a warrior two positioning. So we'll step the feet apart wide. And then we're going to have that strap folded in half again, like we did before. Take it behind the back of your head. And just look, leave it there for a moment. Let's get the feet set. Turn your right leg out, left heel in, bend your knee, and we'll come into our warrior two position and try to position your torso right over your hips. Keep the front knee kind of pressing toward an imaginary wall. And then grab your strap and let's lift the back of the skull up off of the torso. So create that length, the elbow straps just slightly lifting upward on an angle, and press your head back into the strap and see if you can feel your upper back muscles activate. Now notice here, guys, if you pop your ribs out, get your ribs right over your pelvis. Good, now we're gonna straighten the front leg. And we're gonna slide the back arm straight. 
front arm is going to bend. It looks like we're doing an archer. And we're front leg is straight like triangle pose. Keep the elbows lifting. And now start to slide into a part of a triangle, but look up toward that straight um, strap toward your top hand. Good. Now come back up. Keep lifting the skull. And now slide the other way. So bottom arm is straight. And you're going to tip. And you're going to look down toward that bottom foot to the bottom hand. Good, come up, let's do it again. Slide the strap. Now look toward that hand right away and start to come into it. Good, you wanna go part way as much as you can do. And then up, switch the arms. Now we look down and one more time, tip forward. Good, coming up. And then let's release, let's hold on to the strap, but just let it go, parallel your feet. And then let's switch sides. So turn your feet for the opposite direction. And we'll do that again. So when we get our neck in line, it really helps all of our posture. So imagine that wall pressing the front knee open toward us, imaginary side wall, and then back of the skull. Let's just do the warrior two. So lift up the back of the skull and press your head into the strap, which helps strengthen those upper back muscles. At any time, the arms get too tired. You guys can always take a break. Keep the elbows wide and lifting. And then we straighten the front leg. Straighten the back arm. So right arm, look to the right, lift the skull, and then come into a partial triangle pose. Keep a little bend in that front knee. Good, coming up. Slide the strap the other way. Now look toward that straight side. Lift the skull and we look down. Good, coming up. One more time each direction. Slide and look toward the straight arm, lift the skull. And side bend. And one more time, coming up. Left arm straight, lift the skull, and come into your partial trikonasana. Good, inhale, come up. Straighten the legs, let your arms rest for a moment. Let's step it back in and shake it out a little bit. You move your head around. Okay, so now we're gonna try it in the wide leg forward fold. So step your feet apart wide. Again, how far you come forward is gonna be up to you. Some of you are just gonna go a little bit forward and you're gonna still keep working that strap and head, pressing into each other, tractioning your skull. Some of you can come halfway, some of you go to a full forward fold if you want. So strap behind the back of the skull. I'm gonna make sure it's under your hair. So I made sure I had a ponytail today so I can really get it under there. Lift up, bend your knees. So we always wanna make sure we forward fold with a little bend in our knees. Very helpful to the back. Lift the skull. Press the head into the strap. Strap into the head. Feel those upper back muscles engage. You can stay here working this or inhale. Exhale, start to come forward any amount, but keep that length in the back. So we're not rounding the spine. Bending those knees, you come halfway, you come all the way to the forward fold if you like. But we're keeping that length in the spine and we're pressing head and strap. And then to come out, deep bend in those knees. Push the head and strap into each other and carefully come up. Good, and then we'll release. Let the strap go, step it back in, and roll your shoulders out a little bit. Move your head around, shake it out. All right, we're gonna come down and do bridge pose. We are gonna use our strap. So we're gonna come on our backs with our feet flat. And we're gonna use the strap today. 
So the strap is going to go around your ankles, and you'll be able to hold the tail with your hands. Okay. All right. So we're going to just let the strap go for now and come into robot arms. In your robot arms, press your arm bones into the ground and tuck your shoulder blades in a bit. Press the back of your skull, press your feet. So press your arms, shoulders, head, feet, and you'll feel back body muscles engage. But I want you to particularly feel, so you can get your back of your neck muscles to engage. And now relax. We're gonna do two more rounds. Help strengthen the back of the neck. Press arm bones, press shoulder heads, back of skull, feet. Your back's gonna arch a bit. And then see if you can activate the back of the neck muscles. Good, and let it go. Hold it there, one more breath. And we'll do one more cycle. When you're ready, go ahead. Okay, let it go and pause for a moment. Okay, now we're gonna reach down and grab the strap that's around our ankle bones. Hold as close to your feet as you can. Feet are hips distance. And we're gonna come up to bridge in a moment. We wanna make sure that we don't let the knees splay apart. So if you tend to be a splayer, you could put a block between your knees, keep yourself honest. Another thing we're going to be doing is rotating the palms open. So you can practice that here for a moment. Rotate your palms open, and that helps your shoulder blades squeeze together and opens your chest, opens your collarbones. So let that go, and then we'll try it with our hips lifted. When you're ready, start to lift your hips up just an inch or so. Pull the tailbone towards your heels and then lift up again. So we want that length in the lower back. Once you're there, tuck your shoulders in, lift your chest, and then push in your feet, lift your tailbone high, and rotate your arms open. Spiral them open, squeeze those shoulder blades in, pull on the strap, don't splay those knees, and then we're gonna slowly release. And come down, take a breath. Undo your shoulders. And we'll do one more round when we're ready. If you need a break and you want to just stay down in the supported bridge, you could also do a supported bridge. When you're ready, we'll do one more cycle. Lift the hips a little bit. Tuck the shoulders in. And then start to press in your arm bones, your feet. Lift your hips from the tailbone. So really lift your tailbone up, up, up. And that helps lengthen our lower back. Then tuck your shoulders in and rotate those palms open, pull on the strap, lift your chest. And we're strengthening the whole back chain here and even those neck muscles. Keep your head neutral, try not to look to the side. And then let it go. Okay, undo your shoulder blades, set your strap to the side, arms up to a T, and we'll windshield wiper the legs from side to side. Okay, bring the legs back up, roll to your side. And we're gonna come on up, you're gonna need a blanket next. So I'm gonna grab a folded blanket. So we're gonna take our blanket and make it into the trifold. So it normally like is about this size if it comes off a normal pile or something like that. We're gonna make it one third. We've done this before the trifold. We fold it over one third and then back one third and smooth it out, okay? Some of you are gonna want a second blanket for your head. 
So make sure you have one nearby, just in case. If you don't have one, grab a second blanket. Okay. So if you need a second blanket, let's let's start with it. If you don't need it, you can take it out. That's gonna go on the other side for your head. So I want you to watch before you try though. So get your blanket fold set up and then maybe a folded like kind of more square size for your head. Okay. So we're gonna come down with our shoulder blades on that blanket. And the head is gonna be tipped back a little bit. So if it feels like, you know, you don't need the blanket, take it out, because then it'll get your head to drop back a bit more. So like a little bit of a back bend. If that feels like you need the blanket, keep it. And then don't do it yet, I want you guys to watch. We're gonna try and take the arms overhead. If it's too much, you're gonna do the goal post. Arms overhead with your palms facing up, and we're gonna press the fingernails into the ground and squeeze the shoulder blades towards each other on your back. Lift your chest and you might take your legs out straight if this feels okay for you. And we're again trying to activate the chain, back chain of the body to strengthen it. All right, so let's give it a try. I'm gonna come see you guys. Good. Yeah, try not to pop your ribs up. Really get those ribs to draw down and press your shoulder blades down. Try to squeeze them together on your back as you press through your fingernails and straighten the arms as much as you can. Legs could be bent or straight. If the legs are straight, root your thigh bones into the ground. And let's take two more breaths just like that. See if you can feel those back chain muscles engaging. All right, after that second breath, let's go ahead and release. So you're still in that positioning that you're in. Let's take arms into a goal post and windshield wiper while you're up on the trifold. You get a nice little extra stretch into the side waist, ribs, hips. Good, and then go ahead, roll off the blanket, put it off to the side, and come down and hug your knees into your chest. And just do a little rocking on your lower back. A little circling. And then you could take that into happy baby. Let's remember what we talked about last week, trying to keep the spine more neutral as we come into our happy baby. Even here, you could lengthen the back of the skull along the floor, let your chin come in just a little bit. Okay, give your knees one more hug into the chest. And I'm gonna show you guys a really nice neck setup for your Shavasana blanket. So go ahead, roll to your side. I'm gonna have you come up so you can see. And you're gonna need your two blankets. Right now you just need one. The second blanket's gonna go under your knees, okay? So we're gonna take that first blanket and we're gonna open it up so it's like about half, halfway, right? So it's like this. And we're gonna put it down with the fringe towards your body, okay? So I'll let you guys get that set up. So it's kind of taking up maybe two thirds of your mat right now. And then we're gonna take the fringe side and we're gonna roll it up. And that's gonna go under your neck and you're only gonna roll it up maybe about a third to two thirds of the way. You're gonna keep a nice big spot up here, okay? Have your other blanket ready for under your knees. 
I wish I was there that I could fix this for you guys. I hope we can get it. Now, before you come down, I want you to watch the next part of the setup once you get the roll in it, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna come down and my neck is gonna go on the roll. So really supports that cervical spine. And then you're gonna take the sides of it and tuck it in. So really tuck it in so it like forms to your head. So it creates a little like cradling for your head. And then the last part really nice is to take this top flap over your eyes and tuck it in so that it covers up your head. So it really supports and cradles you. And then you can release your arms, your legs are gonna go over the blanket. So if you can, you wanna get this tucked in enough that it's kind of gonna stay there. If it doesn't stay, just do the first two parts. You can just tuck in to the sides of your head if you don't like your eyes covered. I like my eyes covered for Shavasana, okay? So finish that up. And then we're gonna just stay in our Shavasana from there. And if it's too fussy and you can't get it, if I was there, I could kind of fold it up and mold it for you guys. Um, if you can't get it, just let it go and just do the roll. That should feel nice just in itself. Give you guys a moment to settle in. And I'll share a little bit more about this philosophy for today. All right. So this Philosophy of this yoga story of Shiva reminds us how we can selflessly care for the world, how to work together to mitigate the effect of the poison of evils in this world. Day after day, showing us never quit the virtue of compassion and be mentally strong not to let our sorrows win over us. We have many poisons to contend with in our ordinary life struggles. Often what we thought was nectar turns into poison, such as failed relationships, businesses, or friends who become enemies. And we end up projecting our own poison on the world as well. We often find more pleasure and comfort in the pain and failures of others than in their successes. We find more entertainment in destruction than creation, which our modern movies clearly reflect. Our culture is hurling poison on our environment. This takes many forms, such as the pollution of the air, the water, the soils, the toxic chemicals, agitated radio waves from mass media and communication networks crowding the atmosphere or as the noise, debris, and garbage that we mindlessly use to lay waste to nature. Our bodies have potential poisons from maybe perhaps drugs we take, fast food that's devoid of life force energy. Or the air or the noise from the polluted world around us. So we must ask, what is the secret of how to handle the poison and find the nectar? Shiva's throat is often depicted as blue from having held the poison there. The poison never reaches his heart. He holds it at the level of the throat. And the heart of Shiva is ever free of this poison. It is untouched by whatever happens in the realm of time, space, and action. It is the illuminating power of light, the life-giving power of water, the warmth and radiance of fire, and the unpredictable power of the wind. It is love 
which embraces life, death, joy, sorrow. It is the prana of prana, the eye of the eye, the mind of the mind, as the philosophies say. It is the beauty of a young woman, the strength of a young man, the fearlessness of a lion, the shade of a tree, the stability of a mountain. Whatever is the essence is in anything, making anything into the unique thing that it is. This is pure awareness. Pure awareness like the Shiva consciousness. But unless we reach that center of the heart, the poison will affect us. We must learn to hold the poison at the level of the throat and not let it reach the heart. This is to turn the poison to nectar at the level of the throat. The throat is the seat of the discriminating mind in yogic thought. So do not let yourself be put off by obstacles or deceive yourself. Raise everything from within to the light of consciousness, both nectar and poison. Purify the harmful substances in the throat chakra and realize your beautiful inner powers. Make your life in this world a light in the dark. Take a couple more minutes to rest there. All right, let's take a couple moments to return. Maybe starting some smaller movements. Deeper breath. Take all the time you need to come over onto your side for a pause. And then we'll come up to sit when you are ready. All right, so sit up nice and tall again. Let your sit bones drop. See if maybe your head floats a little lighter after all that work. Let's take a couple more moments here to sit with that ujjayi breath. I forgot to remind you guys to use it in practice. So we'll take a couple more moments with that vibration in the back of the throat. Nice soft belly breath. your face be soft, crown of the head really light. 
So when life's poisons come to us, let us remember the sacrifice of Shiva. Let us remember that whatever poison we do not react to, but rather look for the nectar hidden behind it, knowing that it becomes neutralized when we don't react. For even the ocean can take in the muddy waters. Name of the throat chakra in Sanskrit is Vishuddha, which means purification. When we don't react, it's like purifying our response to any given situation. Let's bring our hands now together in front of the heart space. And take an inhale, and as you exhale, bowing your head down to meet your heart. Namaste. All right, guys. Thank you so much.